Hey, we're back with the Azure and the Enterprise. Today, I have Stuart with me today, and we're going to walk through a couple of different options for Azure Red Hat OpenShift, or ARO, uh, 4.x deployment. So, hey, Stuart. Hey, wow, how you doing? Good. Nice hat, nice background. Love it all. Oh, thanks, appreciate that. And we're going to watch a quick intro video, and then I actually want you to tell us about the Red Hat. Hey, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Red Hat in the background? And then I think I also see Michigan stuff in Captain Kirk. Yeah, well, I mean, my last name is Kirk, right? So I'm kind of obligated to be a Star Trek fan. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, you know, as for the Michigan stuff, yeah, I live just south of Ann Arbor. Um, so kind of a Michigan fan by default. Uh, as for the Red Hat, I uh, actually used to work for Red Hat back in the day. I've been with Microsoft for about four years now and was hired in as an open source subject matter expert. And uh, back in the day with Red Hat, I was in their professional uh, services consulting group. And so I've got a lot of uh, exposure with open source uh, field consulting and management solutions, and uh, most recently, Azure Red Hat OpenShift. So really excited to talk about that today. Awesome. So we're going to flip over to my desktop. And I know we're going to kind of look at two quick ways of creating an Azure Red Hat OpenShift cluster today. So I'm going to be uh, the vanilla guy. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and frankly walk through how, how to create a cluster right out of the bat. Um, so that way you've got a default cluster. So that today is if you go to aka.ms, which is our Microsoft URL shortener, WAC OpenShift WAC Docs, uh, that will take you to the root node here. And if you go here and you see Azure Red Hat OpenShift 4.3, uh, and you click on Create a Cluster, uh, it will actually walk you through what you need to do. So frankly, you can come in here, and uh, the only thing you have to do right off the bat uh, is actually go um, log in using the Azure CLI and then add the extension. And it's using the WACWAC WAC index. So basically what it does is it grabs a metadata file and then uses that to go grab uh, your, your extension there and then loads it up. And so uh, after that, you just make sure it's registered. And then there's just a bunch of uh, commands here that you would run uh, to go ahead and create the cluster, which I've taken the liberty ahead of this to go click copy paste uh, and put in here. And so I'm literally just copied and pasted, and you can kind of see you know, some of the subnet prefixes and sizes that they're using for this, so you can go ahead and tweak this. But I'm actually just going to go ahead and take this, um, and in my uh, WSL shell, just come in here and frankly just hit paste. Uh, and so mine will be kind of kicked off. And so uh, we can see right here it's going and creating a, a resource group in my sub uh, and in East US, and it's going to call that V4 East US. And so we're going to let mine go ahead and go here. Um, and then Stuart will flip over to yours just because clusters take more than 10 seconds to create. Um, and we'll kind of talk through what, what the method that you're going to do. Uh, okay. And then we'll come back and when they're, when they're done and see what they look like. OK, looks like yours is still moving forward here a little bit. But uh, I can certainly go ahead and talk about uh, what I'm going to be presenting. So in essence, very much the same sort of thing. Um, however, what I'm going to do is just a slight twist is that I'm going to enable custom domains with mine. So obviously, every enterprise is going to have their own domain. And you know they're not going to want to use the standard arrowapp.io domain that we provide. Um, so there is absolutely a way to use custom domains and uh, very easy, actually, out of the box to uh, configure that. And so I'll go ahead. Uh, and much in a copy and paste fashion that you've shown, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, for those that aren't aware of what that AZ command was that Lyle had run, that is our Azure Linux CLI. So that is actually an RPM, uh, or it comes in a lot of different formats actually, um, that you can download and load locally onto your workstation, uh, whether it's Windows, Windows Services for Linux, or Linux distribution of your choice, uh, and that will allow you to interact directly with Azure from the command line. It's also built into Cloud Shell. Sweet. So I think you're going to share out your screen here, and then we'll flip over to that. Let's do it. And let me find the share button here. Actually, you're seeing me in the background. I, I didn't uh, realize when I ran my script that I actually had uh, that that same resource group already created. So I modified a quick quick things and flipped it over to Stuart Lyle. Okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, you got me here. Uh, yep, I've got I, I've got me. You got you. In me. Okay, and well, me. Let's go over. Let's and go over. We've got to you and you here. and you. All right. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I am just going to, uh, much in the same fashion you did, like I said, do some copy and pasting here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and verify that I've got that RO extension installed, uh, which I do running 020. Um, and again, it's very easy to upgrade this uh, until it gets baked into the CLI. And uh, Lyle has talked about uh, instructions for that. What I'm going to do here, uh, starting off, is creating a resource group for uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift. And for those that are uh, unfamiliar with the term resource group, think of it as like a file folder that's used to keep uh, resources together, whether it's network interface cards, virtual machines, application gateways, you know, whatever we're talking about here, keeping all of that organized for a particular application or business entity or what have you, just a means of organization. Uh, so I've gone ahead and created that uh, resource group in our East US region. Uh, I'm going to create the network infrastructure that's required. Now, these are uh, requirements ahead of time that you need to, um, to satisfy prior to creating your OpenShift, uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my virtual network as well as a couple of subnets. And at that point, we'll be ready to go ahead and create the uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift cluster. So you see I'm creating a subnet for the master nodes as well as the worker nodes. And I'm making some configuration changes to the, uh, to the uh, configuration of the one subnet. And then just having a look at the command itself, if I type in azro create dash dash help, um, it provides actually a very uh, sizable list of configuration options that is a work in progress. As you can see up here at the top, it says it is in preview right now. So uh, there is likely going to be even more uh, ability to configure different options within Arrow when you're deploying new clusters. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and create uh, my Arrow cluster. And oops, that's the command I want. Okay, so. Um, just dissecting this command a little bit, uh, AZ RO creates. I am putting it in the RO demo resource group, and I'm calling it the same thing just for argument's sake. Uh, I'm specifying my uh, network information that I have just created. Uh, I am going to set this as a public facing API as well as ingress. Now, we also support private. Uh, clusters right out of the box with Arrow 4.3, which is very exciting. Uh, I'm going to set up four worker nodes. This can be anything you want. You can scale it up or down as you need. And then I'm going to go ahead, as I said, use a custom domain here. And I have this domain registered. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, my address.rodemo.darmokholdings.com. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off. And for those that uh, may have may have guessed uh, the whole Darmok reference uh, for those that are our fans. Um, so having a look how in my resource groups that are created, we should see an Azure RO demo resource group here, which we do. I'm going to go ahead and click into that. And we should start to see uh, resources populating uh, over the next little while as RO provisions itself. We see the VNet that I just created. And at this point, I think we can go, oh, got a permissions error. So basically, I was too fast in executing the command. So let's go ahead and kick this off again. And it should succeed this time. But uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and put a pause on the video until these provision and we'll be right back. Lyle, anything else? No, I, I think it's just uh, it's important there that you hit on the point that uh, so we will support uh, we're supporting private link. Uh, right out of the box. So that means that customers can have fully private ARO clusters, so on their own network. And I think that's kind of a really important thing here because a lot of customers that are OpenShift customers um, are want that, that full control and they expect that kind of full control. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, exciting stuff. All right, so I'm about to hit pause and we'll be back and our clusters will be created. Sounds great. All right, uh, so your cluster is created. Mine's almost done, so let's walk through yours. Excellent. So as you can see, uh, we have the uh, deployment succeeded here. And uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, configure the custom domain. Now, remember, I use the uh, domain rodemo.darmokholdings.com. So we need to actually do some stuff inside DNS to make that happen. And just for ease, I'm going to use Azure DNS for that purpose. So at this point, I'm going to be creating a new zone, and I'm also going to put that in the same resource group that our OpenShift cluster is in. And I'm going to create uh, that zone, uh, obviously calling it the same name, rodemo.darmokholdings.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to query what the IP addresses are 
of both the API as well as the ingress controller. And then I'm going to create a records for both of them. So I'm going to backspace this and then I'm going to type in the API IP address and create an A record for that. And then I'm also going to create an A record for the uh, ingress. And you notice here I'm using a wildcard address, so that way any uh, prefixes that I use for the different projects that I create in Arrow uh, will uh, auto-resolve to that domain. Now, of course, we're going to get certificate errors because uh, at this point it's a self-signed certificate. Uh, wow, we're doing another video that's going to show how to use uh, custom certificates as well, correct? Yep. Excellent. Yep. Okay, so, so look for that other video. Uh, at this point, uh, we've got a couple other things to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead first and query the name servers that have been assigned to this new zone that I created. And I've got my list here. What I'm going to do is jump back over into Azure. And you'll notice if I hit refresh, we have a DNS zone that's created. And we actually have our OpenShift cluster as well that's now showing inside the resource group. And at this point, I'm going to jump over to the uh, DNS zone for uh, the domain in question, arrowdemo.com. Let me get over to that. I'm sorry, not arrow demo, uh, dharmacholdings.com. So I'm going to create a new record set. I'm going to call this arrow. Is it just arrow? Uh, where was it here? Arrow demo. Arrow demo. Arrow demo. And I'm going to configure this as a name server. And then I'm going to simply copy and paste the host names for the four name servers that have been assigned to that zone into the Azure portal. At this point, when this goes live, I should then be able to do uh, resolutions for the uh, host names that have that uh, that make use of that zone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to list the credentials. By default, uh, the Arrow uh, cluster is pre-provisioned with an initial user called kubeadmin, and there's a password assigned to that user, and I can use the Arrow AZ Arrow command to extract the credentials for that particular user. Uh, I'm also going to uh, figure out here what the um, console DNS host name is. And we should see that fly across the screen really quick. And there's my console right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. As you can see, as promised, we're getting our certificate error. I'm going to go ahead and continue on that. But as you can see, it is making use of that custom domain here at the top. Uh, in the URL uh, for the uh, cluster. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the password in my clipboard and then log in as cube admin with that password. And at this point, I should have a OpenShift 4.3.3 cluster ready to go. Uh, at this point, I can start creating new projects, configuring uh, authentication mechanisms. And uh, I think we're going to do some follow-up videos with configuration of Azure Active Directory, as well as HT password authentication, uh, as well as many other things. So uh, while I think uh, with uh, the exception of just showing off my GitHub here for some shameless promotion, uh, I'm going to be done. Uh, for those that are interested in my build scripts for Arrow, so that uh, all of the commands that I showed you are kind of uh, incorporated into a single script, have a look at Stuart at Microsoft on GitHub, and the repo is Azure-Arrow, and all of the scripts that I've created uh, are in here. So, Lyle, I think right. that'll about do it for me. Yeah.
So let me share mine out. So um, so we can see mine uh, went in, in finished, and I went over and ran the same commands as you to go grab my console URL and my password. Um, so if I just come over here and pop that in, uh, we can see obviously my my you know my SSL matches because um, I'm not using a custom domain at this point. But we can see it's the same uh, same as yours. Just, there we go. So we can see I'm running the same thing you are, um, and, and I can go ahead and see that. So uh, pretty quick, pretty straightforward. Um, outside of that, I think we'll, you know, like we said, we'll have a bunch more videos around uh, custom DNS, uh, adding some of that kind of stuff in there. We'll also have um, Azure Active Directory and integrated authentication, uh, probably run around setting up a private cluster and what you need to be aware of on that, and then we'll kind of go from there based on what people ask us, frankly. Yeah, I think we've got uh, migration in there as well. We're going to do a video on that and uh, some other day two operations that I think will be really interesting to the audience here. But this will at least get you going, get you started. And uh, as you see, as Lyle just pointed out uh, as well, it's very easy, very quick to stand up a cluster and then blow it away, recreate it as you need uh, as you work through your uh, dev and test processes. Awesome. Well, thanks. We'll see you on the next one, Stuart. Thanks, Lyle. Talk to you soon. Bye.